Hey everyone, welcome back to beginning. <laughs> welcome back to fabric. <laughs> hey everyone, what? <laughs> hey, welcome. <coughs> Okay, so even though it's beginning fabrication, uh, eventually you're gonna have to weld. So I thought I'd start chucking in a, a welding uh, episode, or just a section anyway. Um, the same way as how I started, which was with a pretty cheap gasless MIG. Uh, so I dug out my old SIG weld 130, it's a gas and gasless, but it's set up for gasless at the moment. Um, I just thought for a nice easy lead in for welding, I've just shaped up this little bit of scrap to replicate the top of a front guard with an aerial hole in it. And then I'm gonna show you how I fill an aerial hole. There's two different ways. I use either a little bit of straight scrap or a screw uh, that's for holding it in place and then there's just another bit of scrap which I'll I'll cut the circle out of so uh, let's get started on that okay so the first thing obviously if this was a, a guard of a car you'd want to sand the paint off so you're working with clean metal and at least wire brush the inside as best as you can reach um, and then you want a piece of scrap that you can hopefully fit inside and then you can just trace the shape of the hole onto your scrap. Alright, so I traced it twice because I'm going to do two examples with these two bits of stuff here. So the pencil I use is quite a thick lead so it it would leave the gap in between my mark and the, and the pencil mark so I just know to not cut right on the line I'll just use that line as a gauge but I'll make sure that there's a little bit of silver left on the outside of each line um, if you use a texture or a sharper pencil that can get right into the edges well then you'll probably be able to just cut up to the line but uh, I'm just so used to using this same pencil I just know the one, how, it, how it marks so that's just one of those things that's personal choice. So uh, I'll, um, I'll show you the next step now for what I do with this. So the reason I've done two is because once that's cut and you're just holding it, it's essentially like a 10 cent piece. Trying to hold it in place while you weld it in is essentially impossible. And you don't really want to hold your finger under it as you weld it because you'll be sure to burn your fingers. So what I do with the screw is I'll just weld the screw onto there then, uh, then I'll cut it out and uh, that way I've got the screw to hold and I can just hold it in the hole which I'll show you when I do it. Um, the thing with that though, especially with gasless because it's not as nice a weld as gas me, it'll try and push the piece in. So with this piece I'll, same thing, I'll weld it on, but I'll, I'll tack it on like that so that it's actually going to hold everything level. This doesn't always work, obviously, if you're welding onto a rounded panel. Um, but I just thought, because I've just made up a flat piece for the example, I'll, uh, I'll show you both ways. So obviously with this one, it's best to cut the, the piece out first and make sure it fits. Whereas if you're using the screw, you can just weld that on whenever you like and you've still got access to cutting the, the circle out. So I'll, uh, 
I'll weld this one on first with the gasless MIG and you can see how gross and crappy it looks but it's still going to do the job and, uh, and then I'll, I'll cut these out. So there's the screw bodged into place. Um, you can see gasless welding isn't pretty um, but it does the job. If you're doing just sheet metal stuff, I used gasless welding for years before I converted to gas. So even though it's not as pretty for just sheet metal stuff that's thin, this, this is fine. Um, another thing probably worth noticing, if it matters to you or not, I don't really set up, I haven't got a workbench that I go to all the time. Like even though this place is a mess, there's always panel stands everywhere. Because I work in all different parts of the shed, so more often than not, I'm just working on a panel stand with a bit of wood or a bit of metal on it. Um, so depending on what I need to do and where I need to do it, I don't have to worry about walking backwards and forwards to a bench. Um, so don't be too put off if you don't actually have a workbench. Just any kind of platform you can set yourself up on will, uh, will do the job for you most of the time. All right, so I'll cut these out now and then I'll weld this piece on. Okay, here's our little pieces. I, uh, I just cut these out with the grinder to uh, make it quick, just for this little demonstration. Um, but you can use tin snips. I have got a plan in the future to film showing a few tips on how to cut, like tight curves and that sort of thing. Um, so I don't know whether I'll actually upload that lesson before this or not, but either way it'll be it'll be in this series somewhere. So with the the piece with the screw on it, it uh, fits in nice and neatly, but you can you know it's easy to move as well. Um, you can use pliers to hold this; it'll usually help you be a bit steadier than your hand. Um, but on a flat piece. Uh, that bit will just sit straight on there and, and just hold itself in the hole. Also, don't worry about how gross that weld is. I, uh, I didn't have my helmet on, I just closed my eyes and tacked and obviously I missed a couple of times. Um, but it's, you can see it's gone through fine, so it's good enough for, for holding this little piece on. And then once this little circle's welded in, if you can't just wiggle that off and snap it off, you can just run a little cut with the grinder and and get this part off and then you can just clean it all up when you clean the, the rest of the weld up. So I'm going to use this method to weld this in and, uh, and then we'll see how it cleans up. I um, just wanted to show with the by holding it with pliers it's not so much so that your fingers don't get hot because you really only need to get like a tack on each side of this and then you don't need to hold this anymore but it's just you can just be more stable if you let your fingers protrude off the handle of the pliers you can actually grip the panel and just sort of hover that down into place and because you've got more than enough contact on the panel that's actually a lot more stable for me to hold that in the hole there now than it is if I just kind of hovered it above above there. You can lean on the panel still but I still find that me personally I just get a better grip of it to hold it steady when I use the pliers to hold this piece rather than just using my hand. Um, anyway we're going to use this this method for this one so I'll, uh, I'll go get a couple of tacks on this and then we'll see how easy this is going to be to snap off. Okay, so that's tacked into place now, and uh, I don't know if you can see it's nice and flush with the with our little test panel. So, let's see if we can snap this off. It has got a fair tack on it, but not. there we go. So that's come off with its ugly weld, and uh, now we can can weld the rest of that up. And uh, I have actually why brush that when I tacked it just to clean off all the crap so you can see the tacks easier but once I do the the full weld I won't clean it before I show you so you can see how dirty 
um, gasless welding looks. So if you do do some gasless welding, you don't freak out and see it's all dirty. That's just how gasless welding is because it hasn't got that gas cleaning the air. So it's a whole different process. Um, it uses a different wire. It uses a flux core wire. Um, so I've done the two tacks opposite each other. So now I'm going to come and do the next sides and then I'll just tack around the place until it's all all welded and um, we'll go from there and I use zinc too that's another thing that's not making the gas welding look nice um, this is 1.15 mil zinc that's what I use for nearly all of my sheet metal work so it's harder to shape especially with like the English wheel but it's a lot stronger than than 0.9 or 1 mil coal rolled so this is just what I like to to use so that the panels and repairs that I make are nice and sturdy. All right, well, I'll get this welded up and I'll be back. <coughs> Who was that? Yeah, so you can see how feral that looks. Uh, it's certainly not a pretty looking weld by any means, but it's it's welded through as well as it needs to. And by the time it's sanded up, you'll never know that you did it with a the gasless welder. Um, like the welder even sounds weird if you're used to how a gas mid sounds so don't be put off by how weird it feels at start it's, uh, it's still going to get the job done. All right well I'll give this a grind up and, uh, and I'll be back. All right so I've just given it a quick grind with the grinding disc and the grinder obviously. And you can see I haven't gone all the way to the bottom of the, the weld because I'll actually, I'm close, like there's not, not a lot of material left on there. But just for the sake of trying to keep it all as level as possible, um, I try not to grind down into the metal too much past the weld. Um, so I'll now finish it off with my butchered down 40 grit sanding disc to finish flattening that off. And I have noticed too, there's a couple of little pinholes, um, which I'm not gonna really bother about with this because it's just an example. Um, but depending on what you're welding, you, you don't want those pinholes. Um, like if this was in the top of a front guard, it would mean that the underside was gonna be exposed to anything that the front tire flicks up. So if you have a pinhole in this weld, and then you put a bit of filler over that, any moisture and dirt and crap is gonna go through that pinhole and get under the filler, and it's just gonna deteriorate and delaminate with surface rust. So um, don't do what I do <laughs> while leaving pinholes. Just make sure that, if, especially if it's a panel that's exposed to any kind of moisture from the back. Um, but it's also, it's just a good habit to get used to not having pinholes in anything to do with the panel because uh, you're just asking for, for trouble in the future. All right, I'll give this a sand up and uh, we'll see how it looks. Well, there's our bodily finished project. Um, pinholes aside, you can see that that's come up pretty smooth, even though I've really only spent about I don't know, eight minutes something getting this done so far so um, if you're actually going to do it on a proper piece you'd, you'd want to spend a bit more time on it but uh, I just wanted to run you through a basic process of uh, gas, gasless welding as well as if you are filling a little hole a couple of ways of holding the, the little patch in place um, so a couple of good things about gasless welding is um, nowadays you can pick up a good cheap little MIG for a few hundred bucks brand new and second hand ones are even cheaper. Um, my first MIG was an 80 amp SIP gasless only and I used that for a couple of years doing, doing panel work when I first started teaching myself um, and then I stepped up to this one uh, which is a 130 amp but I still ran it gasless for a good few years um, just because I got used to it it didn't bother me that it wasn't all pretty um, it was only when I started doing 
seat belt mounts and things like that that I I went up to the to this the, the 240 because um, I found that this one on gas even though it was a nicer weld it cooled it down so I kind of took a bit of its grunt away for doing things like quarter inch plate for seat belt mounts um, but for just panel work these little MIGs are great and you can run them on gas and still do your panel work um, so yeah they're a handy thing you can weld exhaust pipes all sorts of things with these little fellas um, and also with gasless you can do it out on the driveway you can do it in the wind you can do it in the shed with a fan on which is nice uh, whereas because I run everything with gas in the shed here it's a, just a hot box in summer because I can't have any breeze or anything coming through um, the only thing I'd say if you are going to do any kind of work at home like out on the driveway or in a carport just be wary of you know the neighbours kids or anything like that because staring at a weld directly is really bad for you so you just want to make sure that um, you shield the neighbours or anyone who might be around so that they're not seeing seeing the weld directly um, yeah so I think that's about a good enough little thing for our first little welding exercise um, if there's any other little things you want me to go over just feel free to ask I've got a few ideas that I want to go over anyway so I'll, uh, I'll just keep doing the little plans that I've got made but anything that you think of just let me know and I'll uh, see what I can do all right see you later um, just another little welding thing while I think of it um, a lot of the times if you're welding up trim holes or smoothing out an engine bay or just doing little basic holes that aren't rust um, if you get a, a hole that's about this size which is I don't know maybe 10 mil finger nail smaller than a fingernail um, you can just weld around just do tack welds around the edge and eventually you'll fill it in um, one thing you can do though to stop it stop the weld just trying to fall inside itself um, brass is good or a piece of alloy and just hold it underneath and then do your, do your weld the MIG weld won't actually weld to the alloy so it's not like you're going to weld this to it it's just going to sort of help gravity a little bit as the weld gets hot it's quite easy for the for the whole weld to to literally just become a red hot pool and, and fall away and then leave you with a hole again um, so well, if you've got a little piece of scrap alloy or brass um, just put it in the back and uh, and then do your, your little circle of welds until your hole's gone and then you can take this away you will see that it'll it'll discolor the alloy and depending on the size of the piece it you know it might melt a little bit um, but it won't stick onto it so and you don't want to you don't want to weld straight onto it you still want to weld you know in this case onto that yellow piece this is purely there just to hold the weld up while the weld fills a hole and, and then cools down so uh, that's just another little tip that I've used quite a lot on old chassis like 50s trucks and that sort of thing where you're welding up dozens of holes um, it's a nice little way of saving yourself some time so uh, that's it for this little welding tip um, until next time cheers I had a question regarding clamping things when you weld from a dude who's making shelves in his garage um, so I'm just going to show I'm just going to weld these two bits of scrap I'm just going to put a, a half decent sort of a, a tack on this side um, and just to show you how much a weld shrinks and how much it can pull the material that you're welding together um, so I'm going to try and just do the weld and then we'll be able to physically see how much this piece will actually tip over towards the weld which is why you need to either clamp it or just quickly you know weld one corner and then do the next corner to, to stop it uh, pulling pulling out of shape uh, so we'll do that now okay just changed my earth I've um, put it on a bit of metal 
sand at the bottom of this just so my earth can be away from the job because it's a magnetic earth and it, it, uh, it will actually hold these together and we don't want it to. So I'll uh, turn that up a bit because this is quite a thick wall. Um, it's like 2.5 mil or so mil wall pipe. So that's a 12. see that moving as such but there is where are you? a fair gap under there now I just don't know how to show you <laughs> so it's certainly not straight so if you're actually trying to make something that's square um, it really pays to clamp or to um, at least jig somehow your frame if you're making a frame of some sort to stop it getting those gaps as the well cools, it shrinks um, and you can see it's lifted the lifted the piece off the, off the, the bottom piece so you can manipulate the pieces when they're not fully welded you can tap it over or you know pull it with a clamp to straighten it out um, or just do little tacks so that you can knock it around easier rather than a you know a bead so this is really just a demonstration to show how much a weld can pull on on metal and it's even worse with sheet metal it'll distort sheet metal so easily so more often than not, the sheet metal needs to be uh, hammered, hammer and dollied afterwards to re-stretch it. Um, but it's very hard to, to stretch panel beat MIG welds. Um, so maybe later on in the series we'll go into TIG welding and, and the benefits of each, each sort of welding. So I hope that little uh, exercise showed you something about shrinking welds. All right, cheers. Well, thanks for watching another episode. Um, I hope it was useful. Uh, I didn't really know how to start bringing welding into it. Um, so I just figured gasless MIG being cheapest form, that that would be the place to start. So if you want to see any other um, welding stuff just uh, let me know and I'll, I'll uh, add it into another episode all right well um thanks so much for watching and uh, I'll see you next time cheers bye